Five years older. He was the oldest of my mom's kids. Yeah, I'm still in the contractor. Did I tell you about it? Yeah, you don't want to know it. Sylvia! I'm home! Hello? Hi, Mother. What? No, I in the door. That's all right. How are you feeling? How's your back? That's good. It's not a bad time, although I just... All right, that's fine. He's fine. They're fine. I will. I will, mother. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh my God. 
We did not order black. This is this this is this is not what we ordered. Yes, in, in Sherman Oaks, may I have a number for Nelson's on Riverside, please? Yeah, thank you. Yes, may I have a ship in the delivery department? Thank you. Shows black. That's impossible because it doesn't go with anything we have. All right. All right. Let me try the Sherman Oaks store upstairs. See what they have in stock.
since the great evil began. Today, laboratories all over the world are adopting a new, more holistic approach to their studies, which they call deep ecology. Deep ecology goes beyond the traditional scientific framework to incorporate a greater spiritual awareness of the planet, or as eco-philosopher Carl Grass puts it, an understanding of the oneness of all life. supposed to sort of naturally cleanse the body, you know, of all the toxins. Just do it. It's been so run down lately. Really? Yeah, I've just been really busy. We have this plant dinner coming up. Right. Maybe you should try it. It would be a lot of fun. We could do it together. Well, why don't you just try it? Do you know what you want? Yes. I'm going to have the fruit salad and the herbal ice. Shapely blonde, loves it for emergency room. I only asked her, well, what, what's wrong? What's the problem? She says, well, it's kind of embarrassing. But I was using my vibrator, and it got stuck. <laughs> I can't get it out. It's stuck inside. So they rush her up to emergency. They admit her. They uh, rush her up to the operating room, and they get some specialist to perform the surgery. And it's a 10-hour ordeal. And finally, she wakes up the next day, and the specialist walks into her room and says, well, I got some good news, and I got some bad news. The bad news is, we did everything we possibly could. We tried everything, but we just couldn't get the darn thing out. We just couldn't. But the good news is, we were able to change the batteries. <laughs> uh, if somebody doesn't seem to like your jokes, Dad. Yeah. Slight rash and bit congestion. Now, I'll, uh, I'll give you some ointment and some decongestant, but uh, geez, I, I don't know what else to do. Are you. I guess I'm just a little stressed out lately. Uh huh. You're just tired from it? Well, that's not uncommon. Um, you might be in bed. No, I don't take drugs. 
those are a drink, and I, I don't even um, like coffee very much. I'm just a total milkaholic, actually. I mean, before the fruit thing. Yeah, stop the food drive. You need protein. And while you're at it, uh, try staying off dairy. Dairy is very hard on your digestion, hard on your intestines. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Good to think. Thanks. In the 80s, there were more and more gangs in the Los Angeles Basin. Plus, many more stabbings and shootings by AK-47, Uzis, and MAC-10s, killing numerous innocent people. L.A. was the gang capital of America. Rapes, riots, shooting innocent people, slashing throats, arms and legs being dissected were all common sights in the black ghettos of L.A. Today, black and Chicano gangs are coming into the valleys and mostly white areas more and more. That's why gangs in L.A. are big American issues. Worry about it. Good job, Lord. Why does it have to be so gory? Gory? That's how it really is. Yeah, I'd love to. So, what did Albert have to say? He just said I should uh, slow down a little, you know, stop the fruit diet, eat less dairy. Well, that's exactly what I said, isn't it? To me, the whole fruit thing didn't make any sense. But, basically, there's nothing to really worry about aside from being a little run down. Yeah, that's good. So, is that how you start losing? Just don't say it, use the eye. Yeah. Actually, I was thinking of, of trying the perm for a change. Perming it? Well, at least didn't tell me to schedule the perm. No, uh, I didn't schedule one. I just thought of it now, of trying it. Unless... No. No, there's time, actually. I, I had a cancellation. You still want that manicure? Sure. So, uh, so we meet him for lunch, Carl's group, Ted and I. And who comes in but this kid in shorts? I mean, he looked like he was about Jonas's age. Couldn't believe it. Ted said it looked like I'd seen a ghost. Oh, that's good to meet you, Jonas. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'm glad, honey. Yeah. Sexy. Gotta touch something no, because I, I don't want to hear about it. I'm sorry. Um, I know it's not normal, but I can't help it.
working on some designs for our house home mm -hmm. in my spare time. And, uh, and you have one child? My husband, little Rui, um, he's, he's not my son. His name is my stepson, Rory. He's 10. How long have you been feeling unwell? Um, about two months, three. Um, I, I've been under a lot of stress lately, and and then my friend, Linda, and I, she's just probably my best friend. She lives down at, um, uh, anyway, um, 
we started this fruit diet together, I, I think that sort of set it over. So. Are you uncomfortable? No, I, I just got there. I mean, aren't you supposed to ask me questions? really need to be hearing from you. What's going on in you?
My name is Carol Wang, and I live in Southern California. I saw your notice at the health club near my house, and decided to write and tell you a little bit about myself. For some time now, I have not been feeling up to par, and was hoping your organization might be of some help. I'm originally from Texas, although I've lived in the LA area most of my life. I had asthma as a child, but it never really got in the way of school or recreation. I've always thought of myself as someone with a pretty normal upbringing, and as basically a healthy person. But for the past several months, that has all started to change. Suddenly, I find myself feeling sick. Hey, what's, what's going on? I've been calling you. I thought you were asleep. Someone, um, Brenda called about trading Thursday carpool for Saturday or something like that. She said you didn't know what that was about. No, she said she called it back. Um, I thought you were asleep because you weren't. What are you doing? I was writing this thing. and from all walks of life. But you find you all have one thing in common. Strange, never-ending ailments. Suddenly you can't cook dinner anymore because the smell of the gas from your stove makes you ill. Or if you take the freeway, you feel as if you might choke on the fumes. Your family and friends tell you that you're overreacting, that it's all in your head. But your symptoms worsen. Fatigue and depression turn to migraines, blackouts, even seizures. Now, if this sounds familiar, you're not alone. What you most likely are is one of a vastly growing number of people who suffer from environmental illness. That means that for reasons not yet known to us, certain people's natural tolerance to everyday substances is breaking down, usually as a result of some kind of chemical exposure. Today, there are 60,000 chemicals in everyday use, yet only 10% are tested for human toxicity. This is a disease that you catch from your environment. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was just... No, I just took a photo of the bed. So did you just get home? Yeah. So how'd it go? What? Your thing. This morning. What was it like? Well, it was just this thing on getting sick on fumes and bug sprays and stuff. You mean on, like, pollution? More about people who get sick from chemicals and what it does to you. Who told you there was this? No, I just... At the health club, I saw a flyer. 
So, if you're doing filtration, I mean, you want it in set because of time frame? No, I just. I don't know why. So most of the time there's a trigger, new cars, new kitchen, new cars, new strong paint fumes or strong fragrances. Uh, okay, no reaction. Please prepare. Um, Thanks for a laugh too. Right. Then one day, bam, it hits you and suddenly your body is wrapping everything around you like a Geiger counter. Food, air, everything. Thanks for a laugh too, Mark. Thank you. What we're doing now is testing about 50 separate foods and molds to determine what your neutralization doses will consist of. And, um, and then they'll, um, they'll stop it? Uh, no, I'm just, no, neutralization fabrication is a way to aid you during the cleaning up process, but that's all it really is, is an aid. Okay, so stand just a little bit. Okay, let's mark it point zero one two. Excuse me. thing you need to do in order to clear is create an oasis in which to live. Your oasis is your safe place, your toxic free zone where your load has been significantly reduced. For some, that can mean an airtight porcelain lined enclosure, something like a refrigerator. For others, their safe room is just a stripped down room within their house that's uh, conducive to good ventilation or air control. My name is Sarah Pinter. I live in Orange County here fumigation company and we're in the process of a suit against the company for improper handling of their chemicals. So great. Thank you. Yeah. Would you stand please? My name is Abigail Cartier Rousseau and I'm my sensitivity originated with fragrances. I was employed for twenty three years. Mm -hmm. I've been spending some time at the retreat in Renwood, so mm -hmm. I'm doing much better. Great, great, terrific. Thank you. And you ma'am? My name's Carol White. This is my husband, Greg. We live in the San Fernando Valley. We're here for my wife, who's been ill, to uh, learn more information and hopefully to gain from it as well. Great. I hope so, too. My doctor thinks I'm nuts. He thinks the whole thing is completely in my head. That's what my husband still thinks. It is in your head. It's in all our heads. What do you mean by that, Helen? It makes you crazy. She's right. Well, it ends up in your head because it's, it affects the neurological. And it will make you depressed. It really will. I mean, how does an eye viewer say it's psychosomatic? I mean, how does he make his eyes swell shut? I mean, why would he want to do that? He, he can't go into, into Chunky e. Cheese anymore. He, he, he can't go into showbiz. Why would he do that to himself? It's true. It's like you go into a building, you're like walking along the hall. It's like you don't know when that monster is going to jump out at you. You just like go 
I'm one wolf, like any normal person. All right, with your mask and, and your oxygen tank and, and your bottled water. <laughs> so, of course, I didn't understand why it's citrus, since I had tested negative for citrus until all of a sudden I remembered how the oranges had rolled out of their plastic into the bag with red papers in them, because newspapers, the ink. Really? Also, yeah, that and, um, you know, our couch, our beautiful new couch? Yeah. Totally toxic. Really? Yeah. Anyway, it's just made me more aware than I used to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Next up, the low. What is it? Why is it? And what can be done to improve it? First, what is your total low? Well, in the chemical-laden world in which we live, impurities are all around. Everyone must deal with a certain amount of impurities and toxins at any given time. And that's your low. It's the maximum amount of toxins your body can tolerate, which for most people is rather large. But a chemically sensitive person is not able to carry a normal load. What we have to do is unload. This means we go back to zero and starting from scratch, substance by substance, we build the load back up. Remember, the goal is to get clear. And so the safest and quickest way to clear is to fast. Fasting, which can last up to five days depending on the individual, is usually followed by the rotation diet or the rare foods diet both of which help protect the system while reintroducing foods back into it. Whatever diet you choose, be sure to omit mold antigen-containing foods like bread, cheese, alcohol, ketchup, vinegar, mayonnaise, mustard, coffee, or chocolate. Molds are very hard on the immune system, whether you're EI or not. And throughout your unloading process, be sure to have adjusted your living conditions accordingly. Safe bodies need safe environments in which to live. And there are healthy alternatives that exist for just about every toxic product, gas, or ventilation system out there. But it's up to you to find them. Visit them, pray with them, and get them here. New York. It'll be the same again. Well, things just started tumbling down on top of me. Do you sure your team will be down low no question. This is going to be a big sale.
all of which continue to elude conventional medicine. At Wormwood, we offer an alternative. I like to think of us as a kind of safe haven for troubled times. We're the most extensive cooperative treatment residency of our kind. But what I think makes us really unique <laughs> is our emphasis on the individual. Where are these victims of 20th century disease? Learn about this place from somewhere. Reason, the coal mine warning us of a disease ridden future. If so, the Renwood Center is certainly ahead of its time. People come for all different reasons. I guess the thing we all have in common is like why, you know, why do we all get sick to begin with? What's it called? Renwood. Susan, I work with Claire. We've spoken on the phone. Hi. We're so glad that you made it. I heard Mal making a ruckus. I thought it might have been your car. I hope she wasn't too... Oh, no. She's been having a real rough time lately. Her husband's very sick, and she's just... <laughs> uh, that's okay. Let me help you with your things. Thanks. This is a chemical free zone. We have reading boxes, a safe TV, and there's a 911 phone in, in case of any kind of medical emergency. We're sorry to hear that your husband wouldn't be able to join you. Well, I, I know. He's just in the middle of all this business. They, they should be here soon, though. He and his wife. I should call them, actually. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. There's a phone inside the center. Great. We acquired the center in 1978, and we've been battling to keep it ever since. But basically, this is where all group convening takes place. Um, we have all the workshops and um, our evening talks, that sort of thing here. The dining room is right across the way. On the other side of the street. Oh, hi. Um, you yeah. must be Carol. Carol, <laughs> this is Claire, our director. Hi. Welcome to Rainwood. <laughs> Here's your chair. Oh, whoops. Well, I guess you just wiped out. <laughs> There's nothing more debilitating than travel. Claire was hypersensitive when she first came to Rainwood. No, I'm just semi hypersensitive like the rest of the world. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little um, from the flight. I know. <laughs> we'll just quick get you checked in and then we'll take you down to your cabin and then you can flop. We'll do whatever to do. But I know that there are quite a few people who are anxious to meet you. Thank you. 
Um, Carol, do you want to leave your bags here and use the pay phones? They are just beyond the chapel, the little auditorium to the right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did you forget anything? No, I just thought I'd call you and see you. No, I'm glad you called me. We're just about to go out and grab a bite to eat. Oh, you guys, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just... You just relax and take care of yourself, get well quick, and we'll come see you in a couple of weeks. As soon as I reach deadline on this. Okay, babe? Okay. Love you. Say hi to Roy. I will, and um, we'll talk again real soon, okay? Bye-bye, okay. sweetie. Later. Night. I want to welcome all newcomers, all short- and long-term visitors, and extend our warmest support for the acceleration of your healing process. So that you can relax and receive the full benefit of your stay here, we ask that you observe community wishes in the following ways. Silent meals are observed at breakfast and lunch with a side of the room for men and a side of the room for women. In addition, we ask you to refrain from smoking, drinking, and use of recreational drugs while on the premises. And we ask that you respect our practice of moderation in dress and restraint in sexual interaction. Instead, we ask that you try to focus these feelings inward towards your personal growth and self-realization. End of speech. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, especially our long-termers, Carol and Ward. to the front. No, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> okay, so we're feeling good, huh? We're feeling warmth. We can look into each other's eyes and actually see rejuvenation and personal transformation happening. Why? Is it because we've left the judgmental behind? <laughs> and with it, the shame and condition that kept us locked up in our pain. But what I want to share with you tonight what I want to give you tonight is an image to reflect on. An image of a world outside as positive and as free as the world we created here. Because when you look out on the world from a place of love and a place of forgiveness, what you are seeing outside is a reflection of what you feel within. Does that make sense? So, what do I see outside me? I see the growth of environmentalism, right? <laughs> and holistic study. I see a decline in drugs and promiscuity. I see sensitivity training in the workplace. positive things outside in the world because what I am seeing is a global transformation identical to the transformation I revel at within. And with that, we are one with the power that created us. We are safe in and all is well in our world. Strangers are as bad. 
have a reaction? No, I'm fine. These feelings you're having are just fine. They're so natural. I mean, you've just done something so big. I mean, it's something many people never do in their lifetimes. You've taken this big step on your own behalf. You've left behind everything that's known and secure and all the people you love and trust. And you've come to this strange new place with strange new people. Completely understandable that you didn't feel lonely or feel sad or even angry. <laughs> you know, when I first came here, I couldn't even walk. I'd been living six miles from this chemical factory. This was in Michigan. I was leaking like 15 gallons of chemical byproducts every day. <laughs> when I got here, all I could do was just sit in my safe room. Every day, every hour of every day, I would look at myself in the mirror and I would say to myself, Claire, I love you. I really love you. At the end of the month, I could leave my room and shut the door after I was walking. For me, this was a gift. This whole thing was a gift. Everything I've taken away from here, everything in the material world, and what was left was me. Thank you, Claire. I love you. Such a view. Dear Greg and Larry, how are you guys? I hope everything's going good. I really miss you. I'm feeling a little better, so I decided to stay the full amount. At first, it was hard to get used to, but now I really think it's starting to help. I've been so much more relaxed and eating healthfully, and the desert landscape is really beautiful here. I can't wait till the 25th to show you around and introduce you to everyone. Give my love to Sally and your mother and Linda, and be sure and help your dad for love and kisses, Carol.
Let's talk about you. How did you learn to drink so long? Well, it was just a little um, shortness of breath and some dizziness. I noticed the highway near here, and I wondered if maybe my cabin room was a little downwind or something. I thought that maybe if I tried another cabin... Claire would be the best person for you to speak to about that. Claire? Yeah, she's right there. Okay. I remember Claire sharing with me a little while back something similar about the drinking of drinks and mess. Maybe some apprehension. I was just... All I'm saying is that these feelings that you're having, Carol, are extremely common, especially in relation to new environments, and especially for someone who's environmentally ill, okay? And what we're about is trying to help absorb as many of these tensions as we can, so you're free to do the kind of healing that you need to do. Does that make any sense? Because yes. when that's accomplished, I'm, I'm doing my job. No, I, I know. I'm just still learning, you know, um, the words. No, no, no. The words are just a way to get to what's true. Right? Right. Is it okay? Right. Sure. Sure. I need a partner. Okay. Guess we'll have to figure out what to cut. Right. Yeah. All right, well, I'll think about what to cut. Me too. So let's throw away every negative, destructive thought we might have, and look around ourselves with love. is it sounds like it's spiraling down if you're feeling more sensitive to the fumes that way. You shouldn't really be outside. The problem is there just aren't any summer accommodations available right now, except for cabins and glamour clubs. Oh, I'm fine, really. Oh, except for Harry's. Harry? Mr. Kane, Nell's husband, built a safe house. You can see it. It's right next to recycling over there in the little white igloo. He lived in that? Oh, yeah. After his stroke, he needed a more controllable space, so... She stayed in the cabin, and he lived in the safe house. And he actually improved. It's ventilated and porcelain-lined, and he was perfectly safe as long as no one stepped foot inside. 
Oh, let's just go and do it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a confession I'd like to make. I've stopped reading the papers. I've stopped watching the news on TV. I've heard the media gloom and doom. And I've seen their fatalistic, negative attitude, and I finally realized, once and for all, I don't need it. And so I transform that negative stimulus into something that will not do harm to me. Because if I really believe that life is that devastating, that destructive, I'm afraid that my immune system will relate it too. And I can't afford to take that risk. Neither can you. We are one. said hurry up and clear or clean or whatever it is. Clear. Come on home. Yes, sir. So you really feel like it's still the right choice? And yeah, I, I do. I mean, right before the fumes, I was good. My load was up. I was eating well. So. What did they say about the fumes? Just that I could probably move to another different cabin somewhere. Uh -huh. Where I won't feel them. Yeah. Okay. I just think it's true what they say, that it's up to the individual and that it takes time. Right. Whose house is that? That's Peter's. Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. You like moving? I became sick because I just OD'd on all the drugs I was doing. Oh. Why did you become addicted? Oh, well, I guess I became addicted to, like, blot out the pain of not liking myself, of hating myself, really. Hmm. Well, thank you. I believe that I made myself sick. After my son got sick, because I was just, we just get so eaten up with guilt, really. Uh, you know, because I felt that I had done it to him. I mean, I was the one who put him in that school. Uh, I put him in that environment. You were punished for yourself. I was um, deeply wounded as a child and had completely wiped it out for years and then uh, suddenly became very ill. Why do you think? 
maybe they let myself miss something as well. <laughs> okay. And the person who hurt you most is me. Why? Not forgiving him. What is the question? The question is, why did you become sick? First I got sick, and my husband thought I was crazy. And then he got sick the same way. What was happening in your life around the time that you first... Uh, how were you feeling when you first got sick? I just wanted to get a gun and blow off the heads of everyone who got me like this. Now, nobody out there made you sick, you know that. The only person that can make you get sick is you, right? Whatever the sickness, if our immune system is damaged, it's because we have allowed it to be through exactly the kind of anger that I'm showing us now. Does that make sense? Does anybody have a problem with that? Which is why you need to remember your affirmations and figure out how to love Nell a lot more. And even Nell's disease. You put that kind of blues away. Sometimes. Sometimes all I see is the hatred and frailty. People's cruelty to one another. Cruelty to themselves. And I realize... Chloe, don't talk to me anymore, kind of boss. Fine. What time's your flight? 7.20. You know what, if you really want to be healthy, you can go make sure all our stuff's in the car and we're ready to go. Okay. You get that? Mm -hmm. You sure? Cologne. I'm not wearing any cologne. Uh, maybe in the shirt. I don't know. Well, I guess we better get moving if we're going to catch the plane. Can you go fast? Just one lane. Just for a short time. I'll be fine. So this other guy, he didn't know anything was wrong with him either, except that whenever he would go into a mall, he was totally depressed, and he would start crying really hard, and contemplating suicide, and then he would step outside, and he would be fine, you know, totally normal. This would happen to him every single time. Good. Yeah. You know what they called him? What? 
Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Flamand behind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still going. No, I'm not. I'm serious. That really happened. I forget if it's pasta cheese sauce, cheese, pasta, or pasta sauce, cheese, pasta, cheese sauce. I think it's pasta, 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 pasta cheese, Stop it. pasta Stop it. sauce. Suddenly, all I see, all over my hands and my legs are black, horrible sores, all over me, oozing. And at first, I'm horrified, and, I, and I'm, I'm full of self-pity and anger and enraged until I realize, suddenly I look down again and I realize that they aren't sores at all. But these black pansies, these sort of <laughs> wilted black pansies that I used to pick when I was a child. So in my dream, I remember that. And, and as I pick up each wilted flower, they will just instantly bloom into beautiful bouquets. Oh. <laughs> Every single one. <laughs> That's remarkable. Yeah. It's <laughs> Incredible lasagna, by the way, guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great right. 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 You know, it almost tasted like real things. doing this and everybody here so much um, it just you pulled me through a really hard period anyway I couldn't have done it without you <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying I'm just, <laughs> just that I really hated myself just the whole time here and um, so I'm trying to see myself hopefully um, more as I am more um, more positive like seeing the pluses like, I think it's slowly opening up now, people's minds, like, um, educating on, on AIDS and um, um, other types of diseases, because, because, and it is a disease, because it's out there, and we just have to be more aware of it, um, just make people aware of it, um, um, even ourselves, like, uh, throwing, leaving labels on, on going into buildings. Yeah. Do you know? Sure. 